So a lot of y'all been wondering, Hog, where the hell has Hog been? I ain't seen him post a video in a while. Well, I've been working on this damn project. And what is it? Turn my bass boat into a streaming boat with a PC gaming rig and everything. It's badass to sell. Let's go check it out. Come on, you piece of junk. It's Hog, baby. So how about it, y'all? You got Hog. Thanks for stopping by. I wanted to share my newest project and kind of next year's thing that we're doing. You know, I wanted to get this ready for New Year, so I apologize for not pumping out a bunch of videos like I usually do. I've been just up to my damn neck in this project. And it's taken about a month and a half of planning and engineering and making sure all this shit was going to work like I wanted it to. And then building the enclosures and running the what? Just doing the whole thing. It's taking some time. But it's finally done. We got to test it out yesterday on the water for the first time. And we caught a fish in wow. Check this out. <laughs> I think I got to buy a fishing pole. I don't even know if I've got one. There we go. Get some bait. We won't Mickey Mouse around. We'll go to the real spot. There she blows, boys. Okay. Let's see how let's throw over here. Alright. Throw out there. Okay. Yeah, there we go. It's a little dink boy, but we got him. <laughs> yes, sir. Look at that little bass. What I wanted to do with it, a couple goals was have multiple cameras, um, have a actual dedicated setup. So not just bring a laptop and put it on a mount and that was it. No, we, I wanted to have a monitor. I wanted to have keyboard in an enclosure that can be outside all the time. Um, you know, we could be on the lake and play WoW or play PoE or play Diablo 1 or 2 or like whatever we wanted to do, do reacts, whatever. That could all be done on the boat. So how is that possible? Well, I have Starlink RV. That's the first thing. Y'all know I live way out in the country in the middle of nowhere. Only thing I've got is DSL, 15 down, 1 up. Yeah, it's 2023. And that's the speeds we're getting for a hundred damn dollars. It's insane. But uh, so we we picked up Starlink, and you know I just kind of realized we could put all this on the boat. So let me show you how we set it up. So what we did, of course, it's its own separate system. It's got a 27 group deep cycle marine battery standalone. So that way we can run the stream. Right now, I've got four hours out of it without having to do anything. We can run the stream four hours by itself. Doesn't affect the engine not being able to crank or the trolling motors not running or anything like that. Then we installed, we come up to, a, there's a waterproof box right next to the battery tray back there in the back. And we installed a dual battery isolator. And what that is is a smart relay that basically connects your engine battery and house battery Okay, in this case, we're going to call it the stream battery. Connects them in parallel, which means 12 volts, but extra capacity. You get the capacity of two batteries. But what that smart relay does is it divides them, separates them, until the engine is cranked. So when the engine's off, we stream in it's separate from the engine battery. When we crank the outboard up, the alternator charges both of them. It's actually pretty badass. So... You know, if we get running low on uh, juice or, or uh, we've been streaming for a few hours and, you know, whatever the deal is, we just crank the outboard up and starts charging the battery. So that was one of the requirements. You know, had to have a standalone system. We can't be stranded on Lake Seminole. There's a bunch of alligators and all kind of stuff. It's a dangerous lake. We don't need to be stranded out here. There's nobody out here either. Uh, 37,500 acres. No, we're not going to be stranded. So that was the requirement. Then we went to a waterproof box and we installed that isolator and a pure sine wave inverter. Has to be pure sine wave. We're dealing with sensitive electronics. This is an 1100 watt inverter, like 22, 2100 watt max. It is certified overkill. I had planned for about 550 watts, 
I'm drawing 120. And that's with the stream powered up, wow going, everything going. This box here will keep everything safe. I also mounted the uh, inverter on uh, some shock absorption pads. It's really just gem mat and cut those up. That way, you know, when we're hitting wake and stuff or driving the boat, there's a lot of vibrations and that's going on a lot. You don't want shit coming apart. So we try to build some kind of shock absorption for that stuff so it doesn't rattle its internals. Then we routed the wires and we used these little, don't ever buy this shit on Walmart. Get, go to Amazon and get them, but they've these little 3M backed wire clips. So like everything real tidy when you're in a fishing boat and there's rods being thrown around and you don't want loose wires everywhere so lures can get wrapped around. Like you just don't need any of that shit. Get everything tucked out of the way. Also, it looks horrible unless everything's tucked out of the way. So we ran the wires into a box, drilled another hole through this, and uh, I wanted to keep the laptop in a secure, dry box that was central to the whole boat. And, of course, that's going to be the rod locker storage box. So I wanted to have the computer in a central location in the boat to where I might need some extension cord, you know, USB extenders, HDMI extenders, or whatever, but I could reach it from wherever because the boat's 19 foot. So we put it in the rod locker box, okay, that's dry most of the time unless there's condensation, which, you know, we address that too. Uh, it's dry, it's deep, and it's easy to route. So that's where we decided to put it. But the challenge was, okay, again, we're in a movable environment. You know, lots of this going on. We got to make sure the laptop isn't succumbed to shock, same way that the inverter mountain area and all that. So, had to take all of this into account when building something to hold the monitor or the uh, laptop, excuse me. So, I ordered an extra battery tray. So, I needed a new battery tray because I was installing an extra battery into the back of the boat. So, I ordered two. And what I did was take the second tray and I flipped it upside down. That gave me an elevated platform about this tall, just in case there is water intrusion in the floor of this particular compartment, the computer's off the ground. So you would actually have to like flood the boat for this to really get in danger of getting water on it. Okay. It'd have to be pretty catastrophic for water to get down in here, period. But, uh, we, we did that. And then same thing with the inverter. We mounted it on some rubber feet. So it's got some cushion. And then I ordered a, uh, it's like an under desk laptop mount. Uh, it's a four way bracket. I used three of the brackets, cut holes out in the center so we could get wires through them and mounted them on this battery box. But of course it wasn't wide enough, the battery box. So we used some, um, <clears throat> what these are is actually inserts from a tackle box from a red bass mafia tackle box. They're really thick, rigid plastic inserts. So we used those to extend it. We actually reinforced those underneath and um, used the battery hold down strap and cut it to size and also now we actually have a perfect laptop mount slide the laptop in there hook it up we have uh, we slide it in fans up so it's got plenty of of breathing ability notice everything in this box has a a spot you know i found a bracket it was actually going to hold the um the brick for the charger perfectly i built a strap into that a little velcro strap so it holds that uh the starlink's got its own little um, bungee cord that holds it in there we've also got a fan in here uh it's basically a pc case fan that i wired for direct usb and you don't really need to use it now because it's winter time but in the summertime if that box starts getting hot or stuffy or humid or whatever you can just plug that bad boy in um, to the dock there and it will it's set up to be a puller and it's pulling out some of these rod tubes and then i went under the deck and drilled a hole so it would pull um, i don't know how efficient how much cubic feet a minute it's going to move that's part of the testing is you know we might need to upgrade that fan or whatever but um this is all part of the engineering process so that's all mounted in there uh, again the the starlink's in there is wi-fi starlink's kind of silly you got to pay another like 75 dollars to get an ethernet core so we've just got the Wi-Fi router right there with the uh, um, PC. So there's no interference or anything. We do have another 
Uh, we actually have a cradle point modem coming that will run off a of cellular um, that one of my subscribers has donated to me. Thank you very much, Alien. Big shout out to you. Uh, we're going to add that as well and kind of have some redundancy so we can travel. We, you know, we haven't had any limitations so far, but we're just going to piggyback off of that also. Uh, but the main sh star of the show is the actual computer setup. And uh, this took some engineering. I did find a, uh, it's a 22 inch monitor, I believe is the size of it. Found it on Amazon for, it's a Philips now, name brand, like $62. <laughs> so I bought that. They had a 48 inch mon single monitor mount, can hold 22 pounds. So I bought that because I wanted to be able to stand up and see screen or you know if we're doing a fishing stream i wanted to be able to have it up here and you know i could do my thing up here and still fish and whatever or i wanted to be able to sit down in my seat like you see here and play and fish from sitting down so it's got multiple positions you can put it in i also wanted it to be uh semi weatherproof at least heat proof because we do live in the armpit of georgia right here on the florida line it does get hotter than the handle on the gate of hell down here. It's not good for electronics. So uh, basically what it is, is we went to Walmart and we bought a storage tote. And the storage tote um, was the perfect size. It gave me two inches all the way around. Then uh, a lot of y'all don't know this. It's not like automotive grade heat shield. Okay. But you can use tinfoil as a heat shield. If you put the reflective side out, it will actually reflect heat. So we lined it with heat shield, tin foil. Then we actually, um, I kind of made a little mold. We filled all that with foam. So it would foam up behind the monitor and all this. Now, granted, all this was taped. All this was, you know, kind of planned ahead. So nothing's destroyed. We let the foam set. We pulled the monitor back out. We put another lining of heat shield. And then um, we duct taped it. <laughs> Everything got duct taped back up. And it's, it's beautiful. You can't even tell it's all black duct tape and all it blends right in. But what it did was it protects that box from the sun just beating down on it all day. Now, granted, right now, like I said, it's winter. It's not going to matter. But in the summertime, all of this is going to matter. Like this GoPro that I'm looking at you, uh, I'm going to have to build a uh, little enclosure for it with a fan and all. Like there's still more engineering that needs to happen because... You know, when you start getting direct sunlight on these electronics and all, you gotta you gotta keep them alive. So this was part of the. I don't want to have to go in in June and, and redo everything. So that's another reason why it's taken me so long. I wanted to go ahead and get everything engineered and done right and done. So we ended up mounting all that, and I uh, got some studs. Everything's mounted on studs. Everything's Loctited in. Um, everything is run. Uh, the pole itself is actually mounted to the deck and then it's mounted through the deck so it's got a plate about this long underneath it and it's got a real long threaded rod it's about half inch threaded rod well it's not that big but half inch threaded rod that's coming up through it's bolted down together then there's bolts that come down into that underneath plate and then there's about six more bolts <laughs> that hold that actual thing on there um, I don't know if I would, you probably could do this. I'm too scared to do it, but you could probably hold on to the side of that thing and it wouldn't bend out. But I know for sure that it does way more than I thought it was going to do as far as holding up the, uh, the setup and all. So it's got a removable cover. That was another thing. I want to be able to put a cover on it in case it's raining or whatever. And um, I have a soldering iron that's got a, kind of a knife edge attachment to it so we basically plastic welded in uh these nuts so we've got thumb screws that go in hold this stuff in there's nuts welded into the actual container that are now one piece of it and uh, we just threw it all together and now well i won't say we threw it all together no it was not thrown together it was meticulously planned and, and executed but it's done and that's what we're doing so I hope y'all think this is cool. I hope y'all will come join me on stream uh, over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash hog underscore TV. That would be badass. Go follow me on my new Instagram. We open in a TikTok, but really nothing's changing except for we going on the boat. 
So we're going to be able to fish and we're going to be able to play games and we're going to be able to do reacts and all kind of fun stuff. So I know I kind of rambled about this. I kind of just wanted to show off my, my streaming setup. What's really cool is we can drive around with it. I didn't think I was going to be drive, be able to drive the boat, you know, at 40 miles an hour. Uh, with Starlink going, but apparently it, 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 just adjust itself and and uh, keeps going so i am beyond stoked at this setup and uh i hope y'all join me for some of these streams i appreciate y'all letting me ramble hit like and subscribe we will get back to uploading okay so let me address that real quick we're not abandoning the channel i just had to get all this done and uh we're going to start releasing new schedules we're going to go to a daytime stream and then in the evening times i'll get back to working on youtube like it used to be so anyway, like I said, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Uh, do have a little store open if you want to get a hog t-shirt. Uh, I'm going to continue to kind of work on that, bring you some more designs. Again, it's just myself here, so uh, we do the best that we can. But I love every one of y'all. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time.